Thank you, Binky. Uh, of course, like you already said, Congressman Sandro Marcos, the eldest son, the yes, eldest yes, son of uh, President uh, Bongbong Marcos and uh, First Lady Lisa Araneta Marcos. Congressman, ang bata mo, no? How old are you? 20? 20, 28, ma'am. 28. I'm actually not the youngest. You're not the youngest. Uh, there are a number of congressmen who are younger than me. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. The, the youngest, we call the Benjamin, that's sort of the nickname, is mm. actually 25. He turned 25 the Who's month that? before elections. Who's Jaime Coanco. Ah, oh, oh yes, Jaime, uh, yung anak ni Charlie. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the late uh, former Charlie Coanco. Charlie yes, Coanco. Yes, okay. Well, Sandro, very quickly, I know we, we have only about two minutes, no? but I just wanted to ask you, Shepard, you know, you, uh, you've been very busy during the campaign, nagpapa interview cut, everything, but this is the first time you're in CNN Philippines, and I wanted to get your thoughts about your father becoming president in spite of your very long family history you know you you are young but you've heard of it you know all the stories yes, you know well, you've lived first it first of all you're yeah. right thank you very much yeah. uh, for having me it is my first time on CNN Philippines uh, with regards to how I feel of my mm -hmm. uh, father becoming president I you know I, I watched I guess from 2016 and from everything that happened in 2016 which frankly was a painful experience mm -hmm. I have seen him grow into the, the, the man he's become or I've seen him grow uh, into someone who is ready for the seat and ready for the presidency. And I think uh, people will be very happy with what he has to say in this coming sauna. And I think it definitely will set, set the tone uh, mm -hmm. for the coming six years. Yeah. Aside from saying that people will be very happy with what he's going to say, can you give us more of a clue? about what he's going to well, say. Well, I don't want to spoil pa. everything. I know, I know, but, but more, pa, because you said that kanina yes. about two hours ago. So you have to tell us more, just a little bit more. You're good at keeping track. Yes. Um, well, everything that we think he's going to say, I, a large part of it will be about the economy and where it's headed for the next six years. Of course, he being the Secretary of Agriculture, concomitantly to being the president, we can expect mm -hmm. agriculture to, to, to play a big role, mm -hmm. not just in his sauna, but in the coming administration. Mm -hmm. Other facets of the speech uh, that response. I have seen are, of course, pandemic response um, and essentially just a roadmap mm -hmm. uh, for what we can expect, what, uh, like any president, what, what he wants from Congress, mm -hmm. what he needs from the legislative uh, arm yeah. of government. Uh -oh. What kind of help is he going to ask from Congress? For what specific legislation? Can I don't want to preempt the president, ma'am. Uh -huh. uh, okay. I don't want to preempt the president, so yeah. let's just wait for him. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. like the beginnings of any administration, I think there are certain earmarked laws that mm. either need to be amended, uh, um, ratified. So I'm sure those will feature in his mm. State of the Nation address. Will, will he address like, uh, you know, th this idea about charter change, amending the Constitution, not just no, political, no, not, not just about federal or parliamentary or how many terms for, uh, for a sitting president, but also uh, the economy for an investment? Personally, let's wait for what he has to say. Mm. But I should, I should think that with the numerous problems, or this is a personal opinion, with the numerous problems that we are facing that are rather urgent, the economy, for example, food security, all of these. Uh, Dapat I, mauna yon. Yes. Okay. I think those are the things that should be addressed first. Yeah. Charter change is important. It should be studied. Mm -hmm. It is not as important as keeping okay. our kababayans fed. It is not as important as making sure the path that our economy goes to in the next six mm. years is a steady path. Yeah, well, that, that sounds good to hear. No? Parang hindi pa napapanahon at dapat hindi ipilit, right? Okay. Will he be making announcements about appointments? Because there are a few more appointments in the cabinet, for example, or other, other I, government I bodies, etc. I the State of the Nation no. address is a uh, appropriate venue, for that. venue to be announcing the appointments. Okay. I understand that there have been some... Uh, there have been some appointments which have not been filled. Uh, but I think if you look at the process that this administration has taken with regards to the cabinet secretaries, it has been one of uh, being meticulous mm -hmm. with regards to picking the right person. And I think the mentality of our president was that rather than appointing someone and rushing it, he would rather take his time with the vetting and making sure that it's the right person Mm. Uh, then, like I said, rushing the whole process. Mm -hmm. So, okay. the things take time. Yeah. But hopefully, we're getting towards the end of that uh, that, that road. Uh, you know. That road. Yeah. Okay. I know. I said uh, we only have two minutes, but I'll, I'll stretch it. <laughs> 
to just one more minute. Now I want to ask also. No problem, ma'am. Um, you know, uh, he, during his inaugural address on June 30th, uh, he, one of his last lines, you know, he talked about, uh, and he never mentioned the 31.6.5 million who voted for him. He talked about 110 million reasons to be confident. Right. No, uh, it sounded to me like uh, your dad was steering away from talking about how divisive the election was. Is that what he's trying to do now? And how would you, as his son, you know, try to address all these issues that, uh, you know, you, we have many political forces that don't agree with him, you know, that see this as um, a very strange uh, happening, you not know, to have a, a, a second Marcos as a president? Well, ma'am, with all due respect, divisiveness might be the opinion of some, but being the first majority president elected since I guess since a very long time, since, since a very long time uh, I don't see anything divisive in it. If you are supported by the majority of the Filipinos, then you can argue that that's the majority. And well, it is the majority, yeah. Exactly. So I, I to call the election divisive would be to discredit the 31.5 or 31.6 million people mm -hmm. that equated to about 58 mm percent -hmm. of the electorate which supported him. Now, with regards to his inaugural speech and what he said, that when he, had, he has 110 million reasons to, uh, he has 110 million reasons that he is confident that this country will flourish, it is because after May 9, you are not the president to 31.6 million Filipinos, you are the president to 110 million Filipinos. And with regards to his message of unity, what kind of unifying president would you be if you only called out the 31.6? He, he hopes to espouse an inclusive brand of leadership within this country for the next six years. And so he needs to think about mm. everyone and anyone, not just the people that voted for him. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Congressman Sandra Marcos. Sandra, maraming salamat. All right. Sa uh, I, I know you're... You need to go and have lunch. <laughs> no, no, no. I actually we have to be in the hall by three. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, Sigina, you can go now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Thank Salamat. You so Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. That was Congressman uh, Sandro Marcos addressing so many issues, uh, not just about uh, his father's presidency.